Well, for some time now, I've been curious to know where some people may get the idea from that all people can be saved. Oh, unless, of course, they're homosexual. Um, that is one person who cannot be saved, or for that matter, shall be even given the gospel to them. Or well, some people think those things. I have great reservation with that theory because it sounds like it is somebody's own interpretation that is determining what is truth and what is not. And yet there are pastors and teachers who do subscribe to that. In fact, this is a good topic to be sure of, especially when it comes to soul winning. Whether a homosexual can obtain salvation is a question that you'll be asked when out preaching the gospel at some stage. You're going to come across people and they want to know. Still, oh, so, so I will endeavour to give you some teaching that will help people have a clear, correct and clear answer concerning this. And we need to know what answer the Bible gives with certainty, not man's vague interpretation. As Second Peter 1 verse 20 verses to 22 says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. On today's sermon, as in all Bible teaching, it is far better to believe in what God actually says than what man can try and make it teach. Man always has his own agenda, but it is God's will that we need to follow, and that can be found when we open the pages of Scripture inspired by him and seek the truth. So where I want to begin today, this is prior to Second Peter. Turn open your Bibles now, as we've already done, to First Peter. Funnily enough, uh, it's probably actually quite a heady topic to sort of uh, get onto. And people might think, oh, maybe people need to be um, you know, uh, and grounded in the Word of God to, to preach on some of these subjects. I disagree. And salvation is simple. I think you can preach on anything. Anyway, um, so according to 1 Peter 1, let's read the entire chapter. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein, you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom have ye not seen, ye love, and whom, though now ye see him, not yet, believe, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what, or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things, things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. 
For all flesh is grass, is grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel was preached unto you. Well, we need to take God at his word, not what we would like it to teach. Because if even one person could be excluded from being saved, then it makes a mockery of God's saving grace. And if that was the case, why does God say in 1 Peter 1 verse 17, And if you call on the Father who with respect, without respect to persons judge us according to every man's work past the time of your sojourn in here and fear, for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Now if I'm not mistaken, we find that God said that without respect to persons. That means it does not matter what a person identifies themselves as, what gender, what nationality, what upbringing you have had, male or female, heterosexual or homosexual, transgender, what colour skin you have, blue, green, black, yellow, or align yourself as an LBGTQ. You can be saved. God has no respect for a person's. About now, the voices that hold fast to the unsavable homosexual doctrine are beginning to spin their wheels and burn out their clutch plate. Haven't you read Romans, they are saying, it speaks of these folks being given up by God? Well, no, you don't have to... Well, I don't want you to go putting God, words into God's mouth by saying that Romans 1 verse 24 and verse 26 and 28 is referring to God giving up on their salvation. Don't you dare. Just because you may have a particular bent view and because you personally have agreements with them, you need to get your doctrine correct. Why, several verses before it says in Romans 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and, to the, and also to the Greek. Well, even before we get to verse 28, it makes it clear that salvation through God is for everyone that believeth. And even for the most basic Bible-believing Christian, we understand that Romans 6 verse 23 speaks to everyone and is forever. Salvation is not time-constrained. It is not dependent on whether you do something good or bad. We are all sinners according to Romans 6 verse 23. Now the particular verses that these pastors try and pull over your eyes as the truth concerning whether homosexuals can be saved is thus. Turn on your Bibles to Romans 1 verse 24. We've just covered some of that, but turn on your Bibles to Romans 1 verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonour their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God unto a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto a vile affections for even their women did change the natural use to that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malicious, maliciousness, Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, as we see, several verses are speaking of God giving up on them. Well, giving their minds over specifically, it says in verse 24, Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart, to dishonour like their own bodies between themselves. Well, actually it mentioned about giving their hearts, um, giving them up through, their, through the lust of their own hearts. Um, then we read that in verse 26. Uh, but it mentions about, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. And finally verse 28 says, And even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. But the heart is not the soul. 
Their affections are not the soul or spirit, and their mind is not the soul either. It did not say giving them over to hell. It did not say that they were unsavable. As we do know, some sins are indeed wicked and abominable. There are sins that God utterly abhors and says that some of them should incur the death penalty. And such sins within the sexual category, like homosexuality, are worthy of death. They are regarded as abomination and should be seen as what they are. They are totally despicable of wicked sorts of sins. But not one sin is unredeemable, according to God. Otherwise, his blood atonement is useless. It couldn't raise a dead cat. That is why our God is great, and greater than all others. There are no limitations as to what sin can be cleansed. After all, weren't your sins pretty bad? I mean, just how bad do your sins have to be to take you to hell? We already know in Revelation 21, verse 8, that your lies are worthy of eternal punishment. Or maybe some of you folks have forgotten just how bad God, just how bad God viewed your sins. Turn to Isaiah, chapter 64. And reading from um, verse 6. But we are all we are all as unclean thing, and all our unrighteousness, all our, all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art thou our potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth, very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Ah, yes, now we remember just how stinking and rotten our sins were as well. They are as filthy rags. Surely the average sin does not incur the death penalty? Sure, a homosexual has sins that are viewed as even worse and should be purged from among brethren within the church. But neither is that condemning to hell. Don't you go forgetting the grace that brought you. God has no limitation as to who can be saved. The only limitations are imposed by man himself. There is a saving grace available, and it is available to all. As we have just ended our soul winning marathon, we may wish to take stock of that saving grace, lest we also become high-minded within ourselves and start to pick and choose who we preach the gospel to. As 1 Peter 1 verse 13 says, Wherefore gird up the loins of your minds, the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This sermon is entitled Redemption Through Grace. Remember the grace that brought you. Your job is to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 16 verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Why every creature? Why not just every man? Why not just every woman? Why not just every child? Then why not just every person? Well, that is very clear to work out, especially if you have your eyes open and are aware of the state of our world. Some people declare themselves to not identify as male or female. Some people choose not to be known as such. But that doesn't matter. What matters is what God made them. Matthew 10 verse 6 says, But from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. Your business is to preach the gospel to all and sundry. It is God's business to save. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, what God was in Christ, to, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Remember, we read that God is not a respecter of persons. 
You see, I believe God already knew that some people in the latter days would pervert what he intended. So just because somebody, someone identifies themselves as some fairyland queen or king of the castle, God is not a respecter of persons and expects the gospel to be, to be delivered to every creature. Giving the gospel is a risky business. You may feel uncomfortable giving the gospel to some people. God has some words of encouragement for you. Have a look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head of head, even Christ. Grow up. God has not cared about your ignorance, your sensitivities. He expects you to preach the gospel. So what if they're a homosexual? You are called to do a job. You know there are some people who don't give the gospel to a homosexual or such like. You know there are some pastors who will not give the gospel to someone who is bent. They have become blinded by their own ignorance. So blind that they couldn't find a bowling ball in a bathtub at 12 noon. They prefer not to see. Don't you become like them? The grace that has been bestowed upon them seems to have lost its humbleness. They have become exalted and high-minded. Turn to Matthew chapter 23. <coughs> and reading from verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. These folks who declare themselves more righteous have some striking similarities with these scribes and Pharisees. When you go out to preach the gospel, you have the same power. You can either choose to preach the good news to everyone. Well, you can shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Have a look over at First Peter, um, chapter two. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings. As newborn babes, desire the sincere work, milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom, coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, have built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, for unto them which he dis be disobedient, the cornerstone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offence, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they also they were appointed. That ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. If you're not preaching the gospel to everyone, if you have favour one over another, grow up, you baby, you are living the life of those you despise. You're a hypocrite. You were once a sinner destined out to hell. You heard the gospel that was once given to you. You called upon the Lord and were saved by his abundant mercy. The blood of Jesus Christ washed you clean. Why can't it wash every other man? Turn to 1 John 1 verse 7. 1 John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, in the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Turn to Matthew 27, verse 11. I'm not sure. 
nærmest øh, og Just gonna quick once here for a minute, won't be too much. So the sun will be on, you know, which... Oh, well, he mentions also that my yoke is easy. And my oh, it's, Lu- it's Luke. Yeah, but your pardon. I wasn't on the... Um... Mm. It's the end of Luke and... Mm. End of Luke 12, is it? Mm. That was on there, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. Okay. That's right. Yeah, it's Matthew 11, sorry. Matthew 11. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, you had, you had 27, 11. It's yeah. actually 11, 27. I had, yeah. sorry. Yes, I had around on one. Yeah, Matthew 11. But of dyslexia. It was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, we go back to Matthew then, in fact, chapter 11. So, um, that's why I don't read the weather report, otherwise you could be getting sunny weather when it's rainy outside. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so 11 verse 27. Uh, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Well, several times, it mentions all. It's all, it's all, and it's all. Verse 27 says, All things are delivered unto me. And he says there that, um, Come unto me, ye all that labour. Um, and of course, in First John 1 verse 7, previously it says that his, Jesus Christ's Son cleanses us from all sin. Some of you pastors need to start showing that grace and mercy bestowed upon you is not a superficial. You need to start living a gracious life. Then you can increase your chances of winning more souls. The blood of Jesus Christ is worth way more than we sometimes give credence. First Peter one verse nineteen to twenty five, which we covered before, says, "But with the precious blood of Jesus, precious, precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God." Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, so that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We need to continue to show forth how precious that salvation is, and that was given even to us. First Peter 2 verse 7 says, Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the cornerstone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offence, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, and to his marvellous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Remember the saving grace that took us from the clutches of hell, and brought us close to our Saviour and his side that once gushed forth blood and water. Of course, as we know in Romans 5 verse 8, it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day." You are a preacher, therefore tell of his wonderful saving love and grace to all, toward all men. Turn to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter um, 2 verse 11 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works did you notice that again? It said, all inequity. Some people do have a time with it, don't they? They really do have an issue with grace, don't they? They think it's only for some. Hmm, maybe they have forgotten Romans chapter 3. Have a look down at verse 9. Romans chapter 3, uh, starting from verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before for, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no not one. And just in case some of these high and mighty preachers and teachers have very short memories, Look down at verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. God said there is no difference when it comes to salvation. The doctrine of salvation clearly makes no distinction who can and cannot be saved. The doctrine of salvation should never be confused when comparing which sins are worthy of death. There is no mention of a reprobate mind spoken of in any verse referring to salvation. Just so that you don't get it confused, believing that such people like a homosexual, bent, left-footed people are unsalvageable, it is you who is bent by willfully, willfully excluding anybody. Only willfully ignorant people follow such hypocritical nonsense. Verse 24 says that you are justified freely. Matthew 10 verse 7 says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. There you have it, you have been freely given salvation, and you shall be freely given it. You have no right to hold on to it and not give that gracious hope to all. You have a job to do. You have been equipped, ready to fulfill your obligations. 
Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Reading from uh, verse. Yes, but reading from verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that form, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Once you are saved and justified freely by grace, you have a duty to continue in his grace and be ready to preach the gospel. We need to be wary of false doctrine, which draw your attention away from serving God. We should be looking to his word and ensuring that we live according to it. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, see, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is, is salvation, even as our bre- beloved brother, brother, Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you as also in all his apostles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, to him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. When we speak to people, whether soul winning or not, We need to be projecting that grace that people may be saved even through conversation. 1 Peter 3 verse 1 says, Likewise ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, that they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. As we near the end of the sermon, let us count our blessings. Turn in your Bibles to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now finally, turn back into Second Peter chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 9, starting from verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. May we exhort and encourage one another to serve God and not man, trust in his word. 1 Peter 1, verse 24 says, For all flesh, flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is the flower of grass, the grass withereth, and the flower that doth fall away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. This is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So, uh, we've just got a, um, a hymn that I'd like us to sing, um, which reiterates um, some of the message that we've uh, heard tonight. And so, um, I guess before we, um, we go into that um, hymn, we'll just uh, pray anyway that, uh, yes. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you would um, enable us to uh, draw nigh to you and to your word, Lord, that we would um, seek to always um, 
find out the truth from, from you, Lord, and just believe on your word, Lord, and, and trust in it, Lord, that you would guide us and, and uh, lead us, Lord, and every step of the way, Lord, and that we would uh, just put our faith in, and trust in you, and that we would live a gracious life and present that, Lord, to the, to the world, that all people might believe, Lord, by, um, by seeing how gracious you were salvation with us, and that we might project that to others. In Christ's name we pray these things now. Amen.